Good evening and welcome to another Adventures Friday Night Quiz. I'm sorry that I'm not with you live tonight. I do feel slightly guilty about this one because I'm off out having a lovely meal. So I do feel slightly bad. Um, but it is my granddad's 80th birthday, so we've got a very special family meal. Um, so I can't miss that. But I didn't want to disappoint you guys. Um, and I didn't want to move the quiz. I didn't want to cancel the quiz. So I have pre-recorded it for you so that you can take part, as always, on a Friday night. Um, but with it being pre-recorded, it does mean that you can pause me, you can go back, you can take your time. You do have a little bit more flexibility with the pre-records. So, you know, every cloud. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm pre-recorded tonight. I think I'm live with you next week. I'm pre-recorded again the week after because I've got a cinema. And then I'm back live with you for the final July quiz. And then things will be changing, but I will let you know later in July. But um, yeah, enjoy tonight's quiz. So tonight's quiz is just a normal pub quiz, but it's not the normal one. There's no theme tonight, but it's not your normal general knowledge sport, that kind of thing. It's just random rounds. So it could be absolutely anything. It's a surprise. Um, each round this week, for some reason, just because as I was writing it, it ended up that way. Each round has is a one word round so the clue to the round the things that the round is based on is one word and then the, there's just questions there's no theme throughout the questions there's no certain does it begin with a certain letter anything like that it's just questions it's just that each round for some reason has ended up one word and that's it so it could be absolutely anything but i, I do hope you enjoy it I think you'll find it a, a nice one tonight. I don't think it's too difficult. Okay, so as always, piece of paper and a pen, snacks, drinks, all that kind of jazz. And I just hope you have fun. Um, I will be thinking of you all while I'm eating my three course meal. Honestly, I will. And I'm still available on the chat, I'm sure, intermittently, should you want to tell me what's going on. Okay, so round one, let's make a start. And round one is all about something we all wish we had more of, money. We all wish we had that money tree in the back garden. So round one is all about money. Number one, which stock market, the second largest exchange in the world, is located at One Liberty Plaza, New York? So which stock market, the second largest exchange in the world, is located at 1 Liberty Plaza, New York? Number two, who said it costs a lot of money to look this cheap? So who said it costs a lot of money to look this cheap? Number three. How much cash do the following British slang terms represent? So there's three questions on this one. So there's three possible points. I'm spoiling you with multiple points already and we're only on question three. So how much cash do the following British slang terms represent? One, monkey. So what does monkey represent? Number two, pony. And number three, score. So write down what the following British slang terms represent, a monkey, pony and score. Three possible points. Number four, in which country was paper money first used as a currency? 
So in which country was paper money first used as a currency? Number five, the Royal Mint has its headquarters in which country? So the Royal Mint has its headquarters in which country? Number six, the paper five pound notes withdrawn from circulation in May 2017 featured which historical figure on the reverse? So the paper five pound note withdrawn from circulation in May 2017 featured which historical feature on the reverse? Number seven, If I Were a Rich Man is a show tune from which 1964 musical? So, If I Were a Rich Man is a show tune from which 1964 musical? Number eight, which city is the major financial centre of the European continent? So which city is the major financial centre of the European continent? Number nine, which American company established in December 1998 operates one of the largest worldwide online payment systems? So which American company established in December 1998 operates one of the largest worldwide online payment systems? And number 10, if you add the number of sides on a 20 pence piece to the sides on a new one pound coin, what total do you get? So a little bit of maths for you to finish round one. So if you add the number of sides on a 20 pence piece to the sides on a new one pound coin, what total do you get? Do you know your coins? Do you? OK, so as I say, because I'm not live and I'm pre-recorded, I will pretty much just go straight into the answers. So if you need any more time, just pause me because um, obviously I don't know. I'm not just going to sit here in silence and I don't know when you guys are ready and you'll all be ready at different times. So if I just go straight into the answers and then you can pause me if you need any more time. So. Number one, which stock market, the second largest exchange in the world, is located at one Liberty Plaza, New York, that is Nas uh, Nasdaq. Number two, who said it cost a lot of money to look this cheap? That was Dolly Parton. Number three, how much cash do the following British slang terms represent? So what? Uh, monkey was £500. Pony was £25. And score was £20. Number four, in which country was paper money first used as a currency? That was China. Number five, the Royal Mint has its headquarters in which country? That is Wales. 
Number six, the paper five pound notes uh, withdrawn from circulation in May 2017 featured which historical figure on the reverse? That was Elizabeth Fry. Number seven, if I were a rich man, is a show tune from which 1964 musical? That is Fiddler on the Roof. Number eight, which city is the major financial centre of the European continent? That is Frankfurt. Number nine, which American company established in December 1998 operates one of the largest worldwide online payment systems? That is PayPal. Number two, uh, and number 10, if you add the number of sides on a 20 pence piece to the sides of the new one pound coin, what total do you get? That is 19. So there are seven sides on a, on a 20p and 12 sides on the new pound coin. There's a fact for you if you didn't already know. So the answer is 19. Okay, round number two. And round number two is all about toys. Who doesn't love toys? Um, so there's some new toys, some old toys, and some we're going to take you back to your youth, that kind of thing. Let's see how well you know toys. So number one, LOL dolls, LOL dolls, are the popular little baby dolls that come wrapped inside a surprise toy ball. What does LOL stand for? And it's not laugh out loud. So LOL dolls or LOL dolls are the popular little baby dolls that come wrapped inside a surprise toy ball. But what does LOL or LOL stand for? Number two. Which toy was the first to be advertised on television and made appearances in the Toy Story films? So which toy was the first to be advertised on television and made appearances in the Toy Story films? Number three, the toy Escalado featured a which sport? So the toy Escalado featured which sport? Number four, the name of which game is derived from the Swahili word meaning to build? So the name of which game is derived from the Swahili word which means to build? Number five, which geometric drawing toy that produces mathematical roulette curves was developed by British engineer Dennis Fisher in the mid 1960s? So which ge geometric drawing toy that produces mathematical roulette curves was developed by British engineer Dennis Fisher in the mid 1960s? Number six, how many columns are there in a connect four grid? So how many columns are there in a connect four grid? Number seven, which London toy shop is the oldest and largest in the world? 
So which London toy shop is the oldest and largest in the world? Number eight, what was the name of Nintendo's first handheld game console? So what was the name of Nintendo's first handheld game console? Number nine, which melody is most often associated with a jack-in-the-box? So which melody is often most associated with a jack-in-the-box? And number 10, which executive toy is a device that demonstrates the scientific principle of the conservation of momentum and energy? I had one as a child. So not that that helps you at all, but most people will probably have had this as a child. So which executive toy is a device that demonstrates the scientific principle of the conservation of momentum and energy? Okay, that is the end of your toys round. So let's go through the answers and see how well you've done. So number one, LOL dolls are the popular little baby dolls that come wrapped inside a surprise toy ball. What does LOL stand for? Not laugh out loud. It is Lil Outrageous Littles. I did not know that. So it's Lil, oh, as in little, Lil Outrageous Littles. If the kids knew that, well done. I hadn't got a Scooby. Number two, which toy was the first to be advertised on television and made appearances in the Toy Story films? That is, of course, Mr. Potato Head. Number three, the toy Escalado featured which sport? That was horse racing. Number four, the name of the game, which game is derived from Swahili word for that means to build? That is Jenga. Number five, which geometric drawing toy that produces mathematical roulette curves was developed by British engineer, engineer Dennis Fisher in the mid-1960s? That is Spirograph. Number six, how many columns are there in the Connect Four grid? That is seven. Number seven, which London toy shop is the oldest and largest in the world? That is Hamley's. Number eight, what was the name of Nintendo's first handheld games console? That is the Game Boy. Number nine, which melody is most often associated with the Jack in the Box? That is Pop Goes the Weasel. And number 10, which executive toy is a device that demonstrates the scientific principle of the conservation of momentum and energy? That is Newton's Cradle. Okay, round three. Transport. It's all about transport. So, number one. Which blue credit card sized contactless smart card is popularly used on public transport in Greater London? So which blue credit card sized contactless smart card is popularly used on public transport in Greater London? Number two, which taxi service in Bangkok it gets its name from the sputtering sound of its engine? So which taxi service in Bangkok gets its name from a sputtering sound of its engine? Number three, 
Number three, the name of which British bu budget airline based at Leeds Bradford Airport is also its website address. So the name of which British budget airline based at Leeds Bradford Airport is also its website address. Number four, which city's underground metro line is the only one in the UK which operates completely underground? So which city's underground metro line is the only one in the UK which operates completely underground? Number five, the Vespa takes its name for the Italian word for what? So the Vespa takes its name from the Italian word for what? Number six, which manufacturer makes the Accord? So which manufacturer makes the Accord? Number seven, which comedy starring Steve Martin was all about him trying to get home for Thanksgiving? So which comedy starring Steve Martin was all about him trying to get home for Thanksgiving? Number eight, what do the initials HGV stand for? So what do the initials HGV stand for? Number nine, what colour is a black box flight recorder? So what colour is a black box flight recorder? And number 10, which American aviator was the first woman to fly the Atlantic solo in 1932? So which American aviator was the first woman to fly the Atlantic solo in 1932? And that is the end of your third round, transport round. So I'm going to go straight into the answers and let's see how well you did. So which blue credit card sized contactless smart card is popularly used on public transport in Greater London, that is the Oyster card. Mind you, you can use your contactless card now, so not many, not as many people use them anymore. So number two, which taxi service in Bangkok gets its name from the sputtering sound of its engine? That is a tuk-tuk. Number three, the name of which British budget airline based at Leeds Bradford Airport is also its website address? That is jet2.com. Number four, which city's underground metro line is the only one in the UK which operates completely underground? That is Glasgow. Number five, the Vespa takes its name from the Italian for what? That is WASP. Number six, which manufacturer makes the Accord? That is Honda. 
Number seven, which comedy starring Steve Martin was all about him trying to get home for Thanksgiving? That is Planes, Trains and Automobiles. Number eight, what do the initials HGV stand for? That is Heavy Goods Vehicle. Number nine, what colour is a black box flight recorder? That is orange. And number 10, which American aviator was the first woman to fly the Atlantic solo in 1932? That is Amelia Earhart. Okay, round four. Round four is kids. So this is all about, uh, I think, yeah, it's all about um, kids TV, kids pro, um, kids literature, kids nursery rhymes, that kind of thing. So there's some from now, there's some from when we were kids, um, that kind of thing. So let's have a look how well you know kids things. Number one, in what town does Fireman Sam live and work? So in what town does Fireman Sam live and work? Number two, what is the catchphrase that is said when Sooty does his magic tricks? So what is the catchphrase that, catchphrase that is said when Sooty does his magic tricks? Number three, what is the underwater city where SpongeBob SquarePants lives? So what is the underwater city where SpongeBob SquarePants lives? Number four, what is the name of Dennis the Menace's dog? So what is the name of Dennis the Menace's dog? Number five, Dipsy and Poe are two of the Teletubbies. Name the other two. And I want both of them for one point because you should all know it. So Dipsy and Poe are two of the Teletubbies. Name the other two. And I can guarantee you have now got that song stuck in your head. And I'm not even sorry because I have songs like that stuck in my head all day, every day. So you can just share my pain. You are welcome. Number six, which British children's sketch comedy television series based on the books written by Terry Deary has a black rat puppet host called Rattus Rattus? So which British children's sketch comedy television series based on the books written by Terry Deary has a black rat puppet host called Rattus Rattus? Number seven, Marshall is a Dalmatian who drives what sort of truck on Paw Patrol? So Marshall is a Dalmatian who drives what sort of truck on Paw Patrol? Number eight, in Peppa Pig, what type of toy does George usually carry around with him? 
So in Peppa Pig, what type of toy does George usually carry around with him? I'm going to disappear off screen for one second. It's like you're not going to see me. You're not going to see me disappear. It's gone very dark. I'm going to turn the light on. Slightly better. I could edit that out, but it will take me ages to do it. So you're just going to have to have me turn a light on like I would be live. You're welcome. Uh, I'm spoiling you tonight, aren't I? Uh, number nine. In the nursery rhyme, Jack and Jill. What do Jack and Jill go up the hill for? So in the nursery rhyme, Jack and Jill. What do Jack and Jill go up the hill to fetch? And number 10, who created Tracy Beaker? So who created Tracy Beaker? That is the end of your fourth round. So let's go into the answers and see how well you've done. Number one, in what town does Fireman Sam live and work? That is Ponty Pandy. Number two, what is the catchphrase that is said when Sooty does his magic tricks? That is Izzy Wizzy, let's get busy. Number three, what is the underwater city where SpongeBob SquarePants lives? That is Bikini Bottom. Number four, what is the name of Dennis the Menace's dog? That is Nasha. Number five, Dipsy and Poe are two of the Teletubbies. Name the other two. It is Tinky Winky and La La. So you need both Tinky Winky and La La for one point. Number six, which British children's sketch comedy television series based on the books written by Terry Deary? has a black rat puppet host called Rattus Rattus. That is Horrible Histories. Number seven, Marshall is a Dalmatian who drives what sort of truck on Paw Patrol? That is a fire truck. Number eight, in Peppa Pig, what type of toy does George usually carry around with him? That is a dinosaur. Number nine, in the nursery rhyme, Jack and Jill, what did Jack and Jill go up the hill to fetch? That is a pail of water. And number 10, who created Tracy Beaker? That was Jacqueline Wilson. Okay, round number five. This is all about time. So how much do you know about time? Number one, in Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, Miss Havisham has all the clocks in her mansion frozen at precisely what time? So in Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, Miss Havisham had all the clocks in her mansion frozen at precisely what time? Number two, which European capital city is famous for its astronomical clock? So which European capital city is famous for its astronomical clock? Number three, Clocks is a song by which British rock band? So, Clocks is a song by which British rock band? Number four, how many official time zones are there in China? So, how many official time zones are there in China? Number five, on which planet in our solar system is a day two years long? 
So on which planet in our solar system is a day two years long? Number six, often known as the first American, who, who is thought to have said time is money? So often known as the first American, who is thought to have first said time is money? Number seven, which SR unit of time is equal to one billionth of a second? So which SR unit of time is equal to one billionth of a second? Number eight, which place name is the most well used in popular culture to measure time verbally? So which place name is the most well used popular culture? Popular, let me start that again. Which place name is the most well used in popular culture to measure time verbally? Number nine, the UK radio magazine programme, Women's Hour, is broadcast on which BBC radio station? So the UK radio magazine programme, Women's Hour, is broadcast on which BBC radio station? And number 10, which American phrase that refers to a very short period of time did comedian Johnny Carson once joke was the time between a traffic light turning green and the car behind honking? So which American phrase that refers to a very short period of time did comedian Johnny Carson once joke was the time between a traffic light turning green and the car behind honking? And that is the end of round number five. So let's go into the answers and see how well you did. Number one, in Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, Miss Havisham has the clocks in her mansion frozen at precisely what time? That is 20 minutes to nine. Number two, which European capital city is famous for its astronomical clock? That is Prague. Number three, Clocks is a song by which British rock band? That is Coldplay. Number four, how many official time zones are there in China? That is one. Number five, on which planet in our solar system is a day two years long? That is Mercury. Number six, often known as the first American, who is thought to have first said time is money? That is Benjamin Franklin. Number seven, which SI unit of time is equal to one billionth of a second? That is a nanosecond. Number eight, which place name is the most well used in popular culture to measure time verbally? That is Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Number nine, the UK radio magazine programme Women's Hour is broadcast on which BBC radio station? That is Radio 4. And number 10, which American phrase that refers to a very short period of time did comedian Johnny Carson once joke was the time between a traffic light turning green and the car behind honking. That is a New York minute. OK, round number six. OK, um, with the fact that it was Independence Day um, on the 4th of July, I have done a round on America. So this is a round all about America. Let's see how well you know it. So number one, how many stripes does the American flag have? So how many stripes does the American flag have? Number two, 
Number two, which state did the United States purchase from Russia? So which state did the United States purchase from Russia? Number three, what is the capital of the United States? So what is the capital of the United States? Number four, what are Lake Superior, Michigan, Huron and Erie and Ontario collectively known as? So what are Lake Superior, Michigan, Huron, Huron, Erie, Ontario, collectively known as. Number five, in which state would you find the Everglades? So in which state would you find the Everglades? Number six, with, uh, which was the 50th state to join the United States? So which was the 50th state to join the United States? Number seven. How many times has Los Angeles hosted the Summer Olympic Games? So how many times has Los Angeles hosted the Summer Olympic Games? Number eight, which president was the first to occupy the White House? So which president was the first to occupy the White House? Number nine, which city has LaGuardia Airport as one of its airports? So which city has LaGuardia Airport as one of its airports? And number 10, what is the name of the most visited urban park in the USA? easy. So what is the name of the most visited urban park in the USA? And that is the end of your America round. So let's see how well you got on. I suspect very well would be my guess, but obviously I don't know because I'm not there. So let me know in the chat, our group chat or message me um, on the Avengers page and let me know how you've got on because I really want to know. Okay, number one, not just in the America round, I mean the entire round, the entire quiz. Uh, number one, how many stripes does the American flag have? That is 13. Number two, which state did the United States purchase from Russia? That was Alaska. Number three, what is the capital of the United States? That is Washington, D.C. Number four, what are Lake Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie and Ontario collectively known as? They are the Great Lakes. 
Number five, in which state would you find the Everglades? That is Florida. Number six, which was the 50th state to join the United States? That was Hawaii. Number seven, how many times has Los Angeles hosted the Summer Olympic Games? That is twice. Number eight, which president of the first was the first to occupy the White House? That was John Adams. Number nine, which city has LaGuardia Airport as one of its airports? That is New York. And number 10, what is the name of the most visited urban park in the USA? That is Central Park, of course. Okay, we have two rounds remaining. One is occupations and one is islands. So we will do occupations first and then we will go into islands. So number one of occupations. In which sort of building does Homer Simpson work? So in which sort of building does Homer Simpson work? Number two, what was the occupation of Denzel in the sitcom Only Fools and Horses? So what was the occupation of Denzel in the sitcom Only Fools and Horses? Number three, what was the occupation of the seven dwarves? So what was the occupation of the seven dwarves? Number four, what newspaper did Superman work for? So what newspaper did Superman work for? Number five, what job did Chris Tarrant do before his television career started? So what job did Chris Tarrant do before his television career started? Number six, what job did Philip Banks have in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? So what job did Phil Banks have in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Number seven, what is the job of Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City? So what is the job of Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City? Number eight, on the show, Three's Company, Jack was going to school to become what? So on the show, Three's Company, Jack was going to school to become what?
Number nine, on the show, the Jeffersons. What was George Jefferson the owner of? So on the show, the Jeffersons, what was George Jefferson the owner of? And number 10, on the show Cheers, what was Cliff Clavin's job? So on the show Cheers, what was Cliff Clavin's job? That is the end of your occupations round. So let's head into the answers and see how well you did. Number one, in which sort of building does Homer Simpson work? That is a nuclear plower, pa plower? I combine the last two words. It's a nuclear power plant. Number two, what is the occupation of Denzel in the sitcom Only Fools and Horses? That is a lorry driver. Number three, what was the occupation of the seven dwarves? They are miners. Number four, what newspaper did Superman work for? That is the Daily Planet. Number five, what job did Chris Tarrant do before his television career started? He was a school teacher. Number six, what job did Phil Banks have in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? He was a judge. Number seven, what is the job of Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City? She was a newspaper columnist. 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 Flip it out, put your teeth in. A newspaper columnist. Why can't, why does that not sound right? I don't know. Anyway, you know what I mean. Number eight, on the show, Three's Company, Jack was going to school to become what? A chef. Number nine on the show, the Jeffersons. What was George Jefferson the owner of? That was a dry cleaners. And number 10 on the show, cheers. What was Cliff Clavin's job? He was a postman. Okay, round number eight. Now, I've got a confession to make. Round number eight is all about islands. I'm going to name the island. You need to write down the country that owns that island. However, I haven't, I haven't looked up how to pronounce these islands, which I normally do when I don't know how to pronounce words so that I don't look like a complete donut, only a slight donut. However, today I'm going to look like a big fat donut because there are a couple within this list that I haven't got a Scooby-Doo how to pronounce. So not only am I providing you with a quiz, albeit pre-recorded, and I'm also providing you with a different level of entertainment because you can laugh at me. You are very welcome. There are some that I can do, um, like the first one is easy to pronounce, but there are others that I could mispronounce. I could, I don't know. We'll find out. This could be comical. But you'll know what I'm trying to say anyway. And you write down the country that that island belongs to. Okay. Number one, Corsica. I can say that one. So Corsica is the island. Who owns Corsica? Number two, Sakhalin is what I'm going to pronounce it as. Sakhalin. I will, I will spell them so that if I am completely mispronouncing them, you can at least figure out what they are. So, S-A-K-H-A-L-I-N. Sakhalin is what I'm going with. Or Sakhalin. You know what I mean. My geography is not very good. My spelling and pronunciation is not very good. You've learned that over the last how many months? 17 months now? 17 months? Blimey, yeah. Okay. Number three. Hokkaido. 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 Oh my 
my gosh. Right. H-O-K-K-A-I-D-O. Sammy is going to be wetting herself. H-O-K-K-A-I-D-O. Who owns that island? Oh, dear. Number four, Sumatra. Sumatra. Who owns that island? Number five. I have no idea. Hanan. Hainan. 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 H-A-I-N-A-N. H-A-I-N-A-N. -A -A I write these questions. Why do I make them so hard that I can't say them? <laughs> Because I don't mind you laughing at me, that's why. Number six, Luzon. Luzon. L-U-Z-O-N. Luzon. Number seven, Spitsbergen. Who owns Spitsbergen? Number eight, Victoria Island. Who owns Victoria Island? Number nine, Tasmania. Who owns Tasmania? And number 10, Kodak Island. Kodak Island. Okay, so we made it through the islands round. Let's find out the answers. So number one, Corsica belongs to France. Number two, Sakhalin. That one belongs to Russia. Hokkaido, Hokkaido, Haki, Haki, that one, Japan. Sumatra, Indonesia. Hainan, Hainan, China. These are going to be pronounced so wrong. I know it. Luzon, Philippines. Spitsbergen, Norway. Victoria Island, Canada. Tasmania, Australia. And Kodak Island, the US of A. There you go. So that is the end of your main quiz. I do, however, have a tiebreaker question should you need it. Um, if not, it's just another free question, so you may as well have a stab. So I'm going to give you the question and then I'm going to give you the answer pretty much straight away. So pause me while well, you have a think and have a quick guess. So because each of the rounds were one word answers or one word clues, I have gone with a tiebreaker question that involves one word. It while is focused on one word. So how many times is Jesus mentioned in the Bible? So how many times is Jesus in the Bible? So the word Jesus, how many times is that in the Bible? Have a think, have a guess, write it down, just have a stab in the dark, whatever. And I'm going to give you the answer now. So pause me if you haven't got an answer yet, because the answer to the tiebreaker question is 983. 983, 983. Um, so whoever gets closest to that wins overall if you had a tie within your household or your friendship groups, etc, etc. So that is the end of our Friday quiz again.
they come around and go so quickly at the moment. I can't believe it's mid, almost mid-July. It's just going so quick. Anyway, um, as I'm recording this, it's Wednesday. Um, so we are playing uh, Denmark this evening. So come Friday when you read, the, uh, when you watch this, we are either in the final or we got knocked out. So I don't want to go, come on England, because we might not even be in it anymore. But I'm, com I'm, I'm, I'm going to say we are because I am excited, I'm confident, and I do strongly believe it's actually coming home this year. So I will see you all next week live for a sports quiz. Some of you hate it, some of you love it. I know it's like Marmite, but with it being the Wimbledon final on Sunday, the Euros final on Sunday, um, and Formula One, the British, uh, British Formula One happening the week after, it's there's a lot of sport happening. I've just renewed my season ticket for the Albion. Yes. Um, so, you know, a lot of sport is happening at the moment. So I thought, why not do a sports quiz? So some of it will be just like general sports and some of it will be on what's happened recently. So there'll be some Wimbledon questions from this year. There'll be some uh, Euros questions from this year. Um, so it will be quite relevant this time as well, as because I know I've done a couple of sports ones before. But this is going to be more kind of relevant of what has happened recently within the sporting world. So I hope you can join me should you wish to on that one. That one is an event, a paid event one. So please do join me if you can. I will be live for that one. I do normally pre-record those ones, but because I wasn't live tonight, um, I will go live with you guys next week instead. Um, because again, I'm not live on the 23rd either because I've got a cinema. So, um, yeah, join me next week, should you wish. I hope I hope we're in the final by the time I've you see this. If not, I'm going to look like a complete tool, but it's okay. I've already done that in round eight. So, um, yeah, come on, England. Uh, I can't wait for the Wimbledon final either. Sunday is going to be a good day, hopefully. So enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy your week. And I will see you all back live next Friday night for a sporting quiz. Good night, everybody, and take care.